All right, to make sense of how the testes descend through the anterior abdominal wall and give rise to the structures of the spermatic cord, we've got this model. Now, it's not the most super realistic thing we've ever seen, but it'll give us a good sense of what's happening and which abdominal wall layers are giving rise to layers of the spermatic cord. So, get oriented first. Right here is a golf ball. A golf ball is going to be standing in for the testes. Trailing out behind it, we've got the green cord that's going to represent the ductus deferens, aka vas deferens, as well as a red and blue series of cords representing the testicular artery and vein, respectively. Right on the other side, we've got a little black cord that might be a little tough to see, stretching out the other side. This is the stand in for the gubernaculum, the connective tissue structure that keeps the gonad up here connected to the labial scrotal swellings of the embryo. And as the embryo lengthens, winds up pulling the testy through the body wall and down into the scrotum. So, here's the layers. First layer is going to be our transversalis fascia here in blue. This is going to be what the testy punctures through and gets surrounded by to form the internal spermatic fascia. And the little remnant of that left on the body walls, the deep inguinal ring. Next up, this kind of diaphanous green layer is the transversus abdominis muscle. It does not actually contribute anything to the spermatic cord, so the testy travels through a little gap in it on its way down. Next up in orange, we have the internal abdominal oblique muscle. That layer gives rise to the cremaster muscle and its corresponding fascia and pulls along some vessels and nerves that go along with it. The last layer the testy descends through on its way to the scrotum is the external abdominal oblique muscle, shown here in white. And that is going to give rise to the superficial inguinal ring. And as it wraps around the spermatic cord, it becomes the external spermatic fascia. So, with all that lead up, let's go to the payoff. From here, as the gubernaculum pulls the testy down, the testy travels, catches a layer of the transversalis fascia, travels through the transversus abdominis muscle without actually picking up an additional layer. Next up, the internal abdominal oblique gives rise to the cremaster muscle that surrounds the spermatic cord. And lastly, the external abdominal oblique muscle creates the external spermatic fascia. And right here we have the contents of the spermatic cord in the testy coming to rest in the scrotum just alongside the tunica vaginalis. All right, I hope that was somewhat helpful and hopefully not too bizarre.